Okay, so when we first went over the controller, we had not yet released the mesh portion. And we kind of promoted it as being called Simple Mesh. Well, they have changed the name to Easy Mesh. It's not pushed down all the way to everything yet, but that's what we're going to be referring to it as. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea how this works. So in this example, we've got two wired access points and every other access point is wireless. All it has is power. So it's using the wireless interfaces to link to each other and to link to the wired access points to get the internet across to everybody. So this feature is actually supported only with the external controller. So when you power up one of the NFT devices or one of the DLB devices flash with NFT, you get three options when it comes up. One is integrated controller, external controller, and standalone access point. So to use this function, which is not turned on by default, you have to be using the external controller. And any one chain, meaning one like network SSID, you want to have a maximum of three wired access points. And at some point, we are planning to do maybe some pre-configuration for some customers. Um, we'll have to collect information like the organization ID, and we could probably pre-configure all these and send them to the customer already, already configured with everything they need. So first, before we get started, you need to understand some of the terminology. So when we're talking about a wired access point, the wired access points are referred to as mesh access points. And the ones that are actually repeating off of the mesh access points are called node access points. So in order to use the terminology and the technology, we're using a backhaul on the um, 5 gigahertz or the 2.4 gigahertz to communicate between all the devices. And when we're talking about the access, that's the actual frequency that the customers are using to connect wirelessly to get internet. So it's going to look something like this. You've got your controller and everything's wired and linked to your controller, the two up to maximum of three, and then all your little node access points in various locations. So what's happening with this is that we're actually using the, the interface to repeat to the other devices. So this is why in a single band device, you're going to lose some throughput if you're actually using this. But that's why we recommend using the dual band devices, the NFT 2AC, NFT 3AC, and the NFT 2AC Outdoor. And again, it will work with the single band devices. It'll work with the DLB devices flash with the NFT firmware. So what happens when we create this, we create a virtual access point that is referred to as the backhaul. So in a single band application, we've only got, for example, the 2.4, we've only got the 2.4 interface. So we're both using the backhaul and the access on that same interface. The same thing is true for the five. So if you have a DLB product flash with NFT, all you have is the five gigahertz. So you're both doing the backhaul and the access on the same frequency. When we use the dual band, we have lots of options on how to handle the backhaul because the backhaul can be turned on for your five gigahertz only, your five and two are just your two gigahertz, and then you can have your access on both five or just two or just five. So there's a lot of options when you're working with the dual band, and this is how you get away from not having any throughput um, reduction from using the dual band because it's using that other interface for all the connectivity between the different mesh APs and the node APs. So this is the same way that we go about adding something to our mesh network. So we have to put our organizational ID in, and you're always going to have to configure your first device. You put your organizational ID in, and then once you open up your controller software, your, your cloud controller, then you're going to see it show up as an option to configure and add to your network. Before we get started on actually adding to the network, we need to create this special network for this mesh. So you would create the network, and in the drop-down list, you're going to choose Easy Mesh. Again, it says Simple Mesh right now, but that'll be updated. So you're going to choose Easy Mesh option, option, and then once we get in here, 
one of the first things you're going to want to do is turn on your encryption on both the backhaul and access. So as you're configuring, everything is, is password protected, so you're not leaving anything open. So that's the first thing you want to do is turn on your encryption. So once we have the actual Easy Mesh network set up, we go about registering each device. So this can be done manually or this can be done by automatically turning on the auto register to that mesh network. So we go through the regular process of clicking in for the first one, assigning it to the specific network, which in this case would be the mesh network. And then we go in here and we can adjust these settings here if you want to turn on the auto assign, which will auto register everything to that same network. This is good if you are in a big hurry and you are doing a lot of access points and you want to register everything without having to manually touch each one. That's going to be a big time saver. So then once we get in, if you look at the type in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that some are labeled node and some are labeled access point or AP. This happens automatically after they're registered and it detects whether they're wired to something or they're completely wireless and it assigns that role. So if you have an access point that was previously wired, you take it to the location to install it. It's now wireless. It automatically detects itself as a node access point. So this is not something you have to change. It's auto detected, whether it's an access point or a node device. So I want to go through some of the you know basics again. So we got to create the mesh network. We got to create the security. We got to decide what backhaul access to use. We got to configure our first device, and then we plug all in remaining devices to the network, and they will auto be auto configured after registration. So all devices once they're configured, you're ready to install and they will automatically detect whether an access point or a node. So if you want to set this up in a lab environment and pre-configure everything, everything's configured after it's registered to your controller, then you go to do your install and you plug everything in wherever you want to plug it in. It's not specific to this is access point one, two, or this was assigned the mesh access point, this was assigned the node access point. So everything you just plug in where you want it, and because it's registered, it's auto-configured, and detects whether it's an access point or a node access point. So that's basically how it goes on terms of configuring the access points, but I did want to come in here and show you. In my case, I have set up a couple of these on a mesh network. And we go in here and we see that this is the backhaul and this is the access. So we go in here and this is the virtual access point that covers all devices registered to this. So from here, we automatically have the SSID broadcast off. And then we can assign if we want to just use the 5 gigahertz. And then this turns on to we're only using the 2 for access and the 5 for backhaul. We can also go back in here and say I want to broadcast on both 2 and 5. So now we're using the access for both 2 and 5 and backhaul only on five. So you can play with these settings just based on your network and how you want to install them. And again, these will update themselves just based on how they're hooked up. And one thing, I do have one entity one in, in here. And in this case, you would want to make sure that you probably either didn't use this product um, with this network because it's a different product, it's a single band, or you created a specific network with only single bands because you want to be able to adjust this to work with that single band. So in this case, we only have two available. So we're not going to have anything, any five gigahertz. We've turned that off on the master. So in this case, the mesh wouldn't really work because we only have 2.4 gigahertz. So you have to just keep that in mind when you're registering devices to a mesh network that you're not mixing like the single band and the dual band on the same network. So that was just um, basically how it works. And we go over here and again, the encryption by default is open. So when you first go in there, you're going to want to go in and turn that on just so that from your configuration, everything's auto connected with encryption enabled. 
So that's basically how it works. It's very simplized right now, but we will be adding like different features here and there and just updating things and tweaking things. But um, so far it's been working really well. And as long as you're using the dual band equipment, you're not having any effect on the throughput. I just wanted to add this extra piece because this was not released at the time we went over the controller and how to install the controller. So it's definitely a workable option if you don't have an area where you could do a lot of wiring. Yeah, because I know you weren't quite clear on how the mesh was working because it wasn't called true mesh. Um, when you're dealing with a true mesh network, a lot of times you have a interface that's installed all the devices separate from the wireless that handles all of that handoff between the devices. But we kind of got around that by using that other interface, 5 gigahertz. Handoff. Okay. Great. Hopefully, this will give you some more information to help sell this when people ask about specifically the mesh thing.